the earth is a work of endless wonders, always dynamic, a perpetual avant-garde, unpredictably beautiful. The life in and on earth makes it the beauty that it is. From the organism, to the population, to the community, up till the biosphere. A perfect holistic design. One such defining aspect in which these levels of association are observed is the landscape. Landscape, as defined by Smith & Smith, is an area of land composed of a patchwork of communities and ecosystems. A patch is an area of habitat that has sufficient resources to allow population to persist and differs from its matrix. Patches that make up a landscape mosaic have several shapes and sizes due to the interactions of several environmental factors and human activities. The perimeter of each patch features edges or borders. Borders refer to the place where the edge of one patch meets the edge of another. There are different types of borders such as narrow and abrupt. Another one would be wide border, which forms a transition called ecotone. Borders vary in length and may be straight, convoluted, or perforated. Overall, these borders connect patches, restrict, or facilitate movement across a landscape, offer unique habitat, and may have effect on species diversity. Species diversity Community structure Species presence or absence and relative abundance of edge and interior environments can be influenced by the patch size. Larger patches would mean greater number of individuals and species. However, increasing patch size would decrease rate of edge to interior. The theory of island biogeography emphasizes the significance of migration or species movement among patches on the landscape. This theory states that the number of species established on an island represents a dynamic equilibrium between the immigration of new colonizing species and the extinction of previously established ones. The degree to which the landscape facilitates or impedes the movement of organisms among patches is referred to as landscape connectivity. There are two components for landscape connectivity. First is the structural connectivity, which relates to the physical arrangement of habitat patches on the landscape, or simply how these patches are linked to one another. And the other component is the functional connectivity, which describes the degree to which the landscape facilitates the movement of organisms.
landscape features corridors which can facilitate the ability of organisms to move patches of suitable habitat. Corridors are strips of vegetation similar to the patches they connect. However, they are different from the surrounding matrix in which they are set. These corridors serve as travel lanes for individuals facilitating the movement among different patches, act as filters, can negatively affect some populations, and provide habitats. Many corridors of human origin, such as roads, designed as dispersal routes for humans, may have negative impacts on landscapes and inhabitants. An example of a corridor that exhibits positive impact is a wildlife corridor. As Michael has stated, these corridors provide not only improved access to habitat, but also ways for people to interact safely with wildlife in ways that don't disrupt animal communities. When speaking of the study of landscape dynamics, the central concepts are metapopulation and metacommunity. Metapopulations are separated populations interconnected by movement of individuals. This is a central concept in the study of landscape dynamics since it provides a framework for examining the dynamics of species that are distributed as discrete populations on larger landscapes. Meta-community refers to the set of local communities that are linked by the dispersal of multiple potentially interacting species. This involves examining processes that occur at landscape scale. Landscape patterns are created and influenced by disturbances. Disturbances are relatively discrete events such as fire, windstorm, flood, extremely cold temperatures, drought, or epidemic that disrupt community structure and functions. Disturbance can be distinguished between a particular disturbance event, such as a single storm, and disturbance regime or pattern of disturbance that characterizes a landscape over a longer period of time. The disturbance regime has characteristics including intensity, frequency, and spatial extent or scale. Intensity, which is influenced by the magnitude of physical forces involved, such as wind strength, is measured by the proportion of total biomass or population of species that the disturbance kills or eliminates. Frequency is the mean number of disturbances that occur within a particular time interval. Scale refers to the spatial extent of the impact of the disturbance relative to the size of the affected landscape. Small-scale disturbances such as the death of an individual species would result to a creation of a gap which is an opening that becomes a site of localized regeneration and growth within community. The gap's physical environment often differs from conditions of surrounding area. However, large-scale disturbances reduce or eliminate local population and modify the site's physical environment. Disturbances can arise either from natural causes or from human activities. Natural causes would include wind and ice storms, lightning fires, floods, hurricanes, grazing animals, and insect outbreaks. Human-induced activities can cause some of the most lasting disturbances to the landscape and can affect ecosystems more profoundly than natural causes since human activity is ongoing and continuous. Exactly.
examples of human-induced disturbances are replacing natural communities with cultivated cropland and pastures, and timber harvesting. Landscape defined by mosaic communities is ever-changing. Alteration of community structures making up the landscape gives way to successional development. This view of landscape suggests a shifting mosaic composed of patches, each in phase of successional development. The ideas of landscape ecology and its dynamics have revolutionized different studies in order to further understand and expand this field of ecology. Quantitative methods can be used to analyze landscape pattern. A paper made by Zhang, Zhou, and Seng reviewed different techniques in landscape pattern analysis. These techniques are grouped according to what would be studied. There are techniques for studying a single patch. Quantitative description of single patch includes the indices as follows, patch form, elongation, circularity, compactness, and development. There are also techniques for studying patterns of a single landscape element. These elements are most important on landscape pattern. Lastly, there are techniques for studying landscape mosaic structure. The measures of mosaics reflect relationships of landscape elements, environmental variables in their construction and distribution. In line with the concepts on landscape dynamics discussed, several studies have been done regarding these concepts. One of the disturbances in landscape mentioned was fire. A study was made by Turner and Rom in 1994 regarding the landscape dynamics of Crown Fire ecosystems. Crown fires are more frequent in regions, having more frequent and or severe droughts, and younger stands tend to dominate these landscapes. Furthermore, crown fires create broad-scale patterns in vegetation by producing a patch mosaic of stand age classes and are influenced by several factors which may affect the spread of fire in the landscape, such as climatic conditions and spatial arrangements. Ground fires induced by the climate may lead to substantial changes in characteristic vegetation mosaic and species composition of the landscape. For example, an increase in fire frequency in forests would likely decrease the abundance of older forest stands on the landscape. This increase combined with the effects of logging would reduce the habitat available for all growth species. A study was done by Ramachandra, Uttam Kumar, and Joshi on the landscape dynamics in Western Himalaya, India. Forest patches have declined from 61 hectares in 1972 to 23 hectares in 2007 with the conversions of forests for agricultural activities, which has increased by 20% from 1972 to 2000. However, the percentage area pertaining to agriculture has decreased to 17% in 2007. One of the reasons is that agricultural area and fallow land were invaded by an exotic weed, Lantana camara, which is an invasive species that thrives in warm, high rainfall areas where it forms dense thicket that exclude native species through shading and allelopathic effects leading to complete dominance of the understory and eventually overshooting the main canopy. In their study, it is proved that due to intense anthropogenic activities, forests are slowly degrading. When anthropogenic causes of fragmentation are considered, forests are more likely to be disturbed and fragmented. This study calls for immediate protection measures from the concerned authorities of the area. In the Philippines, primary succession along an elevation gradient 15 years after the eruption of Mount Piyakubo was studied by Marler and Del Moral indicate that ongoing anthropogenic disturbances and the prevalence of exotic species may prevent the vegetation around Mount Piyakubo from returning to its pre-eruption state. 
elevation, distance from the caldera, and distance to human settlement exhibited the most control over the vegetation. The influence of elevation on cover, species composition, and structure differed in these adjacent canyons. Being considered as one of the mega-diverse countries, the high rate of forest loss has become a serious and troubling issue the Philippines is facing. Forest loss primarily due to illegal logging pose serious threats not only to the country's wildlife and their habitats, but also to the humans since the decrease in number of trees have negative impacts such as during environmental disasters causing floods and landslides. According to data from Global Forest Watch, the Philippines lost more than 600,000 hectares of forest from 2001 to 2013, representing 2% of its total land area. In 2010 alone, the country lost more than 100,000 hectares. In addition, Forma alerts which indicate the likely presence of recent forest damage through satellite data are ramping up, with a nearly threefold increase from October 2013 to April 2014. To alleviate the worsening situation, the government has implemented several programs such as tree planting in rural and urban areas. One of the well-known natural disturbances experienced by the country was the Super Typhoon Yolanda. This typhoon has brought damages to the different parts of the country, especially in Visayas. According to FAO, an overall average of 49% of tree plantations, including banana and fruit trees, were damaged or destroyed. This has severely affected small-scale upland farmers, relying heavily on agroforestry systems for food and nutrition. Mangroves have also been damaged greatly. More than 19,000 hectares of mangroves Inland forests and natural parks were devastated by Yolanda, according to the ENR. In Iloilo, the damage paddy areas recorded over a wide area have affected negatively the people's crops, such as palay, corn, fruits, and vegetables. After the typhoon, Giwan Eastern Summer's landscape has been described barren by marine biologist Margie de la Cruz after visiting the area one month after the typhoon. According to De La Cruz, the surroundings were all brown and dry, lacking in green, in the mountains, or in mangrove areas. The future of landscape ecology, according to Richard Hobbs, is increasingly being determined by human activities since these activities modify existing landscape patterns and processes. Because of these changes brought about by human activities, conservation and land use issues should be tackled within a landscape framework. Thus, larger scale patterns and processes are considered not just single site and global and regional models on impacts and responses must be scaled down to landscape scale. In the study made by Perringer and police, they used refined version of simulation model wood pump with improved climate sensitivity of simulated vegetation in the Swiss Jura Mountains. The group investigated pasture woodland dynamics by applying an innovative combination of retrospective simulations which demonstrate the strong dependency of landscape mosaic on both climate and management. The model is able to simulate the emergence of semi-open landscape structures from the interactions between vegetation and large herbivores such as cattle. During simulations, selective foraging of cattle causes local impacts on vegetation, which in turn, and together with natural successional trend of forest development, drive the dynamics of the landscape structure. The earth is exceptionally beautiful amidst the different complexities 
undergone throughout its lifespan. Several stunning landscapes can be found not only here in our country but also in other parts of the globe.